I'm, I'm thrilled at the opportunity. You're well aware of our next guest, Dr. Ruth Westheimer. Dr. Ruth, good morning. Good morning, both of you. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing well, especially when I look at your picture with both of you smiling. <laughs> While wow, you're looking at, well, that's coincidental. I'm looking at a picture of you smiling here, looking very resplendent in a pink blazer on the cover of your new book, The Doctor Is In. Yeah, the, um, uh, the Amazon people really did a beautiful job. It's even written in gold on the spine of the book. <laughs> nice. uh, and uh, Pierre Lehu, with whom I've done many other books, and I are really very, very happy. And I'm glad to talk to you because I did that book by wanting to show my philosophy of life, that despite the fact that I had a uh, very sad beginning as a, an orphan at the age of 10, uh, coming out of Nazi Germany, uh, having been a sniper in the Haganah, in the Israeli Defense Forces, having been very badly wounded, both legs. But I can, I can dance if I find a good, uh, a good partner, and I was a <laughs> very good skier. So I wanted to show a little bit in that book, and I did it with Pierre Leo. I wanted to show a little bit of how uh, somebody like me can use sad experiences, give them the respect they needed, and then go on and uh, have a career. Not everybody had the opportunity to become a sex therapist, but uh, I was very fortunate, well-trained. Already in, in my early 50s when I started the radio, and I did that radio program on WYNY, <laughs> NBC Radio, for 10 years. Every Sunday night. Ten years. Ten years. And uh, two hours. And I provided a lot of people, even in Rockville, with foreplay. <laughs> <laughs> By the time they got home, uh, they were nicely aroused by listening to all of that talk about sex. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, I've been listening to the radio all the way home. Brace yourself. <laughs> <laughs> now, you, you, you mentioned the, uh, the gold lettering on the spine of the book. You've got 37 books to your credit. Is this the only one with gold lettering on the spine? Yes. <laughs> Bravo to Amazon. I like that idea with gold lettering on the spine. <laughs> now, the other thing, that you, and you just mentioned this in passing, and I remember having read this about you many, many years ago, that uh, when, when, during the 1980s, when, when you, were, you were literally everywhere, mm -hmm. and, and people said, well, there's a lot more about Dr. Ruth that, uh, than, than meets the eye, and uh, she's not only a survivor, she's a triumphant survivor, and there's a difference. Right. Uh, that's a very nice way of putting it, because uh, there is a play about me. It's also going to come to your area. It's called Becoming Dr. Ruth mm -hmm. by Marc Saint-Germain, who wrote uh, Freud's Last Session, and Deborah Jo Rapp, who played me. She's the mother in the 70s show. And I sh at the end of the thing, she, in, in my words, shows the picture of my four grandchildren, and then I say, but it's her who says it, I won and Hitler lost. So it's a very nice feeling of being able to say, despite difficult um, experiences, I was very fortunate uh, to um, become Dr. Rose, and I love it. Did you, did you reach a level uh, of celebrity and success that you, you, you know, you hear a lot of people say, you know, I, I'm beyond my wildest dreams, but I would think in your case, that's got to be true. In my case, you have to say, Riley and Scott, um, beyond my wildest, wildest dreams. <laughs> you have to say the wild twice. <laughs> Never would I have thought that I'm going to talk to you in Rockville uh, early in the morning and that I am plugging a book, um, The Doctor is In, and about Schwadeviva, about the zest for life. If you would have told me that many years ago, I would have said you must be dreaming. <laughs> So it's very nice to be uh, Dr. Ruth. Dr. Ruth is with us at drruth.com, her website, the new book, The Doctor is In. Uh, throughout the book, very clearly a message of, of, of being positive, of being upbeat. Uh, what is, uh, in your case, the mm -hmm. toughest part of maintaining that attitude through your life? The toughest part is really not to despair, not to sit 
and say, oh, look what happened to me. Look at the horrible things that have happened. But to say, give those horrible things respect, say this is terrible, it should never happen to anybody, um, um, uh, a war like uh, that or being, or being wounded or having to be a sniper, but I've never killed anybody. And then to be able to say, let's give it the proper respect, let's lay it to rest, and now let's make the best of it, of life. And to teach people to have that positive outlook. Stay away from negative people. If you have somebody who is always complaining, you have to give them a warning. You have to say, I don't like that. I will listen to you one more time and then go to see a therapist. <laughs> yeah, it makes perfect sense. Speaking of therapy, and, uh, and in particular, uh, you know, your, your advice on sex over the years, what's the most interesting note or response you ever got from somebody who may have been listening or, or read something you wrote and, and, and it changed their life? I tell you what, what, what has changed. In those days when I started on radio, um, we did not know about AIDS. And uh, we did uh, not, uh, there was no um, same-sex marriages. Um, and, and people really did not talk about sex. And if I was able, like it happened not too long ago, I, somebody called on the radio many years ago and said that he's gay. If his parents would know about it, they would kick him out of the house. And I said, keep your mouth shut. He was in high school. I said, finish high school. Go to a large campus where there are many different groups and then to a large city. I met this guy not too long ago in New York City, the Raider. He told me I saved his life. I didn't say you have to confront. I didn't say you have to be out there. I said, do whatever is right for you, but make sure that you have a good life for yourself. That was very wonderful that he said I saved his life. That's outstanding. Yeah. And uh, one question, because we know you're, you're, you're tight on the clock. There's lots of other people who want to talk to you. Uh, how fast do you think you can strip down a rifle with your eyes closed? I used to be able <laughs> to do a stand down, half automatic, half not, very fast. I don't think I can do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. The doctor is in. Dr. Ruth Westheimer, thanks a lot. We're big fans, and we appreciate you taking time out of your day for us. Thank you, Riley and Scott. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. There we go.